Okay. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and Good welcome afternoon. to today's webinar, Study in the University of Sheffield. Thank you all for finding the time and visiting today's webinar. Welcome, Mr. Reno and Ms. Dalila Tasran, and also Ms. Jessica Brim and Ms. Eva Faljia. I'm Shafira Hairanisa, and I'll be the master of ceremony for today. In order to be considerate and respectful to everyone attending and presenting today, for all participants, please mute your microphone. We will now hear uh, a welcoming speech from the head of UNS International Office, Mr. Rino Ardian Nogroho, SSOS MTI PhD. We will turn the time over to Mr. Rino. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, sorry for the technical problems that appears uh, until this moment. So first of all, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon or good evening or good morning, am I right, in uh, Britain? So first of all, I would like to welcome Miss Jessica Brim and Miss Dalila Nasron from the University of Sheffield and also Ibu Eva Faujia from IBEC. Uh, and all of the participants that is in today's sharing session with the University of Sheffield. I want to thank IBEC and of course the University of Sheffield for being present virtually in UNS today. And uh, before going into the session, I would like to give a brief introduction about UNS. Uh, this UNS is uh, abbreviated from Universitas 11 Maret. It's a relatively young university in Indonesia, but the promising one. I, I, I tell you, this is the promising one. And this March will be our 45th uh, anniversary and we are included into the first cluster of Indonesian University um, and also one of the 11 best universities in Indonesia. We also rank 451 to 500 in the uh, QS Asia University ranking and also we also um, if, if you if there's pandemic situation has offered and then you can visit us and you can see our green campus that sits uh, number seven in Indonesia on core 96 in UI Green Metric Indonesia. So you feel very uh, nice to visit UNS. So this is uh, our honor because this would be our first study abroad program this year. So usually we use uh, this kind of program with some universities overseas. And uh, for this year, University of Sheffield is the first one. And we are pleased to host the University of Sheffield as the, one of the best university in the United Kingdom, as we know so far. Um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, students' interest in studying abroad has probably, probably decreased. But uh, sometimes we have to look at this as an opportunity to have uh, students online. However, from the international office, we have always been always actively campaigning for the internationalization at home. So this is part of our internationalization at home to give a channel to our academics and students to pursue their further degree uh, in master degree as well as in a PhD degree for uh, most of the academics here. Uh, every year we have sent students to many universities across the globe uh, to join short course or research programs through our what we call as global challenge program. So we have a yearly program called uh, Global Challenge and we have already sent our students uh, in almost every continent in this world, into Africa, to uh, United States, to British, to Britain, to um, Eastern Europe and so on and so forth. So. Uh, I think this is one of the great opportunity for our students to uh, have more picture about uh, how to be a University of Civil students. 
Furthermore, during this pandemic, we still run uh, this global challenge for online programs. And I think we can have some benefit from this meeting. Uh, we might get something more information about a short course and so on and so forth regarding um, in the what provided by University of Sheffield that can be accessed by our students. And uh, we also have a new uh, target from the government that we have to uh, push our students to pursue master degrees uh, in within Indonesia or outside Indonesia. So I think this might be chances that uh, can be uh, grabbed by the University of Sheffield in this case. Um, the, uh, I hope this will be enlighten our students and also our academics to pursue our uh, further study in the University of Sheffield. With me here also, I invite our um, coordinator of Europe and for further cooperation, uh, Mr. Dimas, Dr. Dimas. I think he is around here. Yes, uh, Dr. Dimas Radian. He was graduated from the University of Chen in Belgium, I guess, and he will be responsible for all kind of cooperation. So uh, I think this at this very moment, I would like to also open a cooperation not only for to pursuing a further study in master or PhD degree, but also in research and other kind of uh, cooperation like uh, exchange student, exchange uh, lecturers and so on and so forth that might be uh, further explained by Dr. Dimas later on. Uh, before ending my speech, I would like to again, thank you for Ibeck for connecting to us with the University of Sheffield. Uh, Bu Iva, thank you for this opportunity. And I hope, uh, we also hope that the University of Sheffield, uh, Ms. Jessica or Ms. Dalila, will develop further cooperation in research, teaching, and publication, as well as uh, pursuing a further study in the University of Sheffield. I think that's all. I uh, hope that it will be a fruitful uh, presentation and a fruitful forum for us to start our cooperation between the two universities. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Pak. Uh, for uh, selanjutnya untuk uh, any kind of uh, collaboration or cooperation, uh, we will contact directly, ya, Pak, ya, after this event. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Dalila. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rino. Now let us hear a short speech and introduction about the University of Sheffield by Ms. Dalila Tasron as the Southeast Asia Regional Officer at the University of Sheffield. We will turn the time over to Ms. Dalila Tasron. Thank you, Ms. Shafira. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Dalila Tasron. Um, I'm based in the Southeast Asia office in Kuala Lumpur. Um, so basically, our um, team in the Southeast Asia office, we kind of like provide support to the um, students applying to the University of Sheffield, or if you have any inquiries about application or admissions to the University of Sheffield. Um, uh, I'm just going to make this very quick because the introduction to the university is actually included in the presentation that my colleague, um, Ms. Jessica Brim, um, that will be presenting later. Um, but my colleague, um, Jessica Brim, she's from the Global Engagement. So basically, um, Southeast Asia Office is also part of the Global Engagement um, team. And um, what we do is mostly covering um, inquiries and supporting students, um, mainly from the Southeast Asia uh, region. Um, during any normal year, usually um, I'll be the one who will mostly travel to Indonesia to cover any recruitment events or um, university info sessions or presentations. But um, since everything is virtual now, so um, I'm glad that we get the opportunity to invite uh, my colleague directly from the UK to give um, an overview about the university, to share you um, more information about what it's like to study uh, at the University of Sheffield. So um, I'll pass the session over to Ms. Jessica Brim. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for having us today. Um, so just bear with me whilst I share my screen and get the presentation started. Thank you.
Okay, so I hope you can hear me and see the screen. Um, just uh, bear with me whilst I also turn off my camera, apologies. Okay, so hello, welcome to our virtual session on the University of Sheffield in the UK. I'm pleased you could join us today. I hope you'll find the information you can uh, take away from this session useful. Uh, and we're already having <laughs> technical difficulties as I struggle to uh, change the slide. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so today we will be covering um, a few different topics of generally about the University of Sheffield, also um, some information on our campus and what to expect, uh, also studying at Sheffield, how to apply, we will touch on COVID-19 obviously, and then how to explore more about Sheffield. Okay, so about the university, um, let's look at the university as a whole first. We are a leading global university. The University of Sheffield is ranked 93rd in the world, 16th in the UK, and second in Yorkshire and the Humber in the 2021 QS World University rankings. We are a member of the UK's prestigious Russell Group. It is a group of research-led universities with a global re uh, reputation for research quality. We are also among the world's top 50 most international universities in the Times Higher Education 2020 rankings, with a ranking of 45 out of 500 universities in Europe. Our reputation for teaching excellence has attracted over 28,000 students who come from over 150 countries. The University of Sheffield is widely recognised for our world leading research and as a Russell Group University, our teachings are research informed. Our research is renowned on the global stage, influencing policy, changing lives and helping us understand the world better. We are rated in the top 10% of UK universities according to the latest research excellence framework, REF 2014. During the assessment, 99% of our research was categorized as internationally recognized or better. We offer a broad range of subject areas and the opportunity for you to develop your passion in the faculty of your choice. We have five faculties, science, engineering, medicine, dentistry and health, arts and humanities, and finally social sciences. On the right, you can see some of our most popular subjects among international students, including civil engineering, architecture, digital media, data science, law, accounting, journalism studies, and more. But we offer many more subjects than shown here. I recommend you visit the university website and check out the departments and the subject areas we offer for yourself. So next up, we're going to show you our campus. First of all, where is Sheffield? Sheffield is part of the region of Yorkshire, where you'll find an abundance of beautiful countryside, regional cuisine, vibrant nightlife and acti activities, and events to suit every taste. We are located in South Yorkshire, just one hour from Manchester to our west, and two hours from London to the south. We have excellent transport links to the rest of the UK and Europe. Sheffield is a city like no other. It's the fourth largest in the UK, giving residents much to explore. It's also England's safest major city, according to the UK Peace Index. It has been awarded the purple flag for city safety, making it one of the safest places in the country for a night out seven years running. The cost of living here is one of the lowest in the UK. Living costs are 10% lower than the UK national average and 25% lower than London. That means that your money goes a lot further in Sheffield. And we are also known as one of the greenest cities in Europe, with many public parks and green spaces for everyone to enjoy, as well as part of the city of Sheffield is actually technically overlapping with one of the largest national parks in the UK, the Peak District, which is famous for its beautiful moors and rocky edges that are very popular with rock climbers from around the world. The city of Sheffield is a university city. We actually have two universities in the city of Sheffield, 
the University of Sheffield and Hallam University. Each university has over 28,000 students each, making the city of Sheffield a very student-friendly city. The campus for the University of Sheffield is a city campus, meaning our university buildings blend in with the buildings of the city. You can see in the red box on this map, um, the majority of our university buildings are there. And then it overlaps with the black box, which is the heart of the city centre, including the main train station that can take you anywhere in the UK. Lots of shops, cafes, restaurants and entertainment venues can be found in the, in the black box area of the city. Um, and it, like I said, it blends in with the, with the campus itself. So there's lots to do around the campus. Everything is very conveniently uh, distanced. You can walk from the heart of our campus into town very quickly in under 30 minutes. Now we'll take a closer look at the actual campus. This is our city campus. Um, it takes about 30 minutes to walk from the management school on the top right to the Department of Materials, Science and Engineering in the Sir Robert Hadfield building on the very left. You can always stop off at the Students Union or one of the many campus cafes on the way. There are 18 to choose from. The Diamond offers students a unique space to create and learn. It is a striking state-of-the-art structure, which is an internationally renowned facility for innovative teaching and learning. Most of the equipment provided in the interdisciplinary engineering labs are similar to those found in industry um, and provides real life industry skills to students. We have flight simulators, jet engines, a robotics arena, a virtual reality lab, 3D printers, manufacturing equipment and more. You can take a look at the labs and study spaces for yourself with our 360 degree tour online. Among the many university buildings that you will have access to includes three main libraries, the Information Commons, the Diamond and Western Bank, plus the Health Sciences Library in the Medical School. Our library facilities are one of the UK's leading research libraries. It homes uh, around 25,000 rare books and over 150 special collections. We have a specialist librarian for every main subject area. So when you need advice and guidance, you can talk to someone who understands your subjects and your course. We provide desktop or laptop computers for students to use in the buildings all around campus. You can get free, fast and secure Wi-Fi all over campus. And we have a dedicated laptop repair center who will try to fix any issue um, you have with your personal device for free. Our flexible printing services lets you print from any computer, tablet or mobile and pick up from any printer on campus. You will also have access to an extensive collection of digital resources, including over 1 million eBooks and 60,000 journal titles. And you can access our digital collections from anywhere. On top of our outstanding library facilities, our students union has been voted the best in the UK four years in a row. And we're second in the Russell Group for student satisfaction according to the latest national student survey. And in the top left there, you can also see Sports Sheffield. So if you're really into sports, we, we have a wonderful gym facility next to uh, one of the main parks that has a swimming pool, uh, badminton courts, football courts, tennis courts, and uh, P classes and everything you could possibly want. Okay, so now moving on to accommodation. We make living in Sheffield easy. We do everything we can to ensure you find somewhere to live which meets your needs and budget. If you choose to live in university accommodation, we can guarantee to find you somewhere as long as you meet a few simple conditions and apply before the deadline. We can also help you find accommodation with any dependents if you're traveling to the UK with your family. Our accommodation is all located within easy reach of our campus. Most of our rooms are en suite and you can choose from our self-catered options. All of our accommodation has free Wi-Fi, 24 seven security and maintenance, and our rent prices include gas, electricity, and water bills. 
We can also help you find accommodation in the private sector. We have a dedicated team called Smart Move for this. We have a variety of options across our city and Ranmore and Enclough residences, depending on what kind of atmosphere and location you're looking for. As you can see, the city accommodation is very, very close to the campus, very convenient for um, crossing, literally crossing the road and getting to the diamond. Um, so that is very popular. Um, and the Ranmore Enclough residences are also very popular if you like a more um, green space. It's a beautiful building set in a lovely park. So it depends on, on your preference. You can choose um, from ensuite, deluxe, standard, shared bathroom options and studios. Uh, ensuite rooms include a single bed, private shower, toilet and sink. The only part of the flat that will be shared is the kitchen. Deluxe rooms contain everything an ensuite room does. However, you will have a larger bed. Standard rooms have both single and three quarter beds to choose from shared bathroom, shower facilities, and shared kitchen. This is typically a cheaper option. And studios are self-contained accommodation with a double bread, private bathroom, and cooking facilities. Um, all of our rooms are self-catered. Okay, so now let's move on to more about studying at Sheffield. Key dates and semesters for 2021-2022. Academic teaching begins on the 27th of September for all undergraduate and postgraduate taught students. The week before that is intro week, which is compulsory and gives you time to register and settle in, as well as uh, experiencing lots of social activities. And the week before intro week is known as orientation week, this is optional and gives students an extra week to find their feet, especially useful for international students. Sessions are put on giving guidance about opening bank accounts and campus tours, as well as social activities. PhD students could start on the 27th of September, but could also start at any time of the year, depending on what is agreed with your supervisor. There are two semesters per academic year. Semester one, um, is 27th of September to the 5th of February, and that is the autumn semester. And semester two is the 7th of February to the 11th of June, that's the spring semester. Each semester is split up by the Christmas vacation um, in the autumn semester of four weeks in December and January, and Easter is three weeks, typically in March, April, and the university does close during the Christmas and New Year break. So moving on to terms and learning style. Postgraduate taught master's studies mostly take one year to complete. A typical program structure for a master's would have a total of 180 credits made up from a selection of modules. 60 credits would come from the dissertation, which would be your largest uh, final project over the summer time. Some programs have only core modules, whereas some other programs would allow flexibility in choosing optional modules. The teaching delivery usually comprises of lectures, seminars, tutorials and practical labs, field work and independent study. Methods of assessment can range from exams, coursework or other assessments. We also have a small selection of MRESs and MRES is, um, like between an MSc and a PhD. Um, they're also one year long um, and they have a substantial research project, but they are very specialist and not offered in all subjects. So do check out the website for more information. PhDs, PhD study in the UK is largely self-directed. Projects are usually three to four years long and um, Bear with me whilst I attempt to play this video for you. It's uh, just a couple of minutes to give you an idea of PhD study at Sheffield.
I'm sorry, Ms. Jessica, we can see the video. Oh, sorry, what was that? Uh, are you trying to play the video? Because we can't really see the video playing and um, we can't hear anything. Oh, what a, sh a shame. I literally just played the entire video thinking everyone could see it. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, right, well, I'm going to give up on that now then and move back to the presentation. Apologies. We can share that um, um, video with everybody afterwards. Yeah, or if you want to try and play it against just that, I think you need to end your slideshow first for now and choose another screen to share so that um, you can share the tab, the, the, the video tab. Okay. I'll, tr I'll try that. Hang on a okay. sec. Sorry, everybody. Right, let's try this again. Is that better? Yes, yes. we can. Yeah. We can see the video, um, but yeah, not really but we, the audio. Yeah, we can hear the voice. So you can in... see it, but you can't hear it. Yeah. Um, if I mute myself, does that make it? Uh, you're not really using. Just you're not really using. Um, a your phone or um, mic, right? I mean, um, what if you go to the uh, audio settings and try to choose same as system maybe? You're able to do that. Sorry, I was on mute there. Um, what what should we do? Dalila, do you want to try and play the video? Do you know how to try? Yeah, let me try it from my end then. Okay, thank you. Okay. So you have to stop sharing your screen. Okay, all right. Uh, let me just adjust my audio. I'll put it same as my system. Okay, is that all right? Can you hear the audio? Yes. Okay, so I'll play. Yeah. Yeah. Just a moment. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry, Miss oh, Demula, the but gone. the sun is too low. The sun is too low? Yes. Um. Sorry, just a moment. System. Uh, um, maximize the audio though. Um, yeah, system is maximized and the one on YouTube is maximized as well. Are you able to uh, sort of like increase the volume from your own um, machine maybe? Uh, I, I, I think it's okay Mr. Lila. You can you can play it. Uh, there's subtitle as well, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll cut, I'll start from the very beginning. Back from the very beginning.
Sorry for the audio problem. Um, yeah, but I should have clicked share sound just now on the share screen. I'm very sorry about that. But um, I'll drop the link very quickly if you prefer to like have another listen to it on your own. So I guess um, just, just you can continue with your presentation. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your patience. <clears throat> Okay, um, so as we said, we will share that video with you uh, later. Um, okay, so moving on to um, our research at the University of Sheffield. Our university has a reputation for the world-class teaching and research excellence across a variety of disciplines. Um, our four flagship institutes bring together our key strengths to tackle global issues, turning interdisciplinary and translational research into real world solutions. On, to, on top of our four flagship institutes in energy, neuroscience, healthy lifespan and sustainable food, we also have a large number of cross country research centres in a wide range of fields. You can find out more on our website by searching research centers. So to study at the University of Sheffield, depending on the course, um, fees range between £19,450 to £27,150 per year of study. A master's course is one year and PhDs are three to four years. Um, certain PhD fees may exceed the range depending on the project. Living costs will vary depending on your lifestyle. London monthly recommended living costs is £1,334 per month in Sheffield and generally outside of London. This is around £1,023 per month. Again, depending on your lifestyle, you could live comfortably for approximately £900 per month in Sheffield, as the cost of living is around 25% less than London. Uh, for those of you who are interested in a master's, we do have postgraduate scholarships. Um, for September 2021, we are offering 150 international postgraduate taught merit scholarships to high achieving international students. It is a competitive process and we receive hundreds of applications every year. To apply, you must hold an offer for one of our postgraduate taught courses. An application deadline is the 17th of May. Uh, we also have the International Postgraduate Taught Scholarship worth 2,000 to 2,500 pounds. There's no application process for this scholarship, 
but you must have an offer that you have accepted by the 18th of June to receive this award. Um, the two scholarships cannot be added together. Find out more about the terms and conditions on our website. And for those of you who are interested in PhD study, the university invests heavily in PhD study and the development of our postgraduate community. Our PhD web pages advertises a number of scholarships and funded projects. Scholarships are awarded on a competitive basis. Applications are assessed on the basis of academic success, qualifications, experience, research background, a clear, well-articulated research proposal, and the potential impact of the research and a good match with a supervisor. The application opening and deadline can vary, so it's recommended to check our web pages for more information. During your study, there are a number of support services that will become available to you. Some examples are shown here. The Student Advice Centre provides high quality professional and free and confidential advice, um, support and representation services to all University of Sheffield students in many areas including exams, housing, immigration, money, and personal issues. 301 Academic Skills Centre provides opportunities for students to develop the essential academic and study skills which underpin their learning at the university. This includes support with planning, academic writing, research for assignments, dissertations, and projects. There is also a range of services to aid your health and well-being and you're welcome to register with our campus health centre. The centre has its own doctors and nurses and provides a range of NHS services. And um, some of you might be interested in the new graduate visa route, uh, sorry, the new graduate immigration route will be available to international students from summer 2021. Students must have a valid student visa at the time of applications and have completed a degree at undergraduate level or above at a higher education provider with a track record of compliance. Successful applicants on this route will be able to stay and work or look for work in the UK at any skill level for a period of two years and three years if you have completed a PhD. The visa fee will cover the fee and the immigration health surcharge. The exact fee will be set out by the government soon. This may, like I said, be more interest to students who um, do not expect to be sponsored. And now we're moving on to how to apply. So um, it is very straightforward to apply for a postgraduate taught course, such as an MSc at the University of Sheffield. We have an application portal on our website. You can choose the course you want to apply for from the prospectus pages and follow the how to apply instructions. Do check the fees and entry requirements before you apply. Also be aware some of our most popular courses may have application deadlines and be in what we call staged admissions. Terms and conditions are on the web pages. Choose your referees carefully. You may want to choose a referee who knows um, you and is able to comment on your suitability for the course. Try to talk to them before making your application. So, how to find a PhD. There are different ways to find the right PhD. You can find a project or a supervisor or find a department or discipline first. There is extensive guidance on our web pages, so please do read through that carefully. Also check the departmental pages um, of the subject area your, of your choice, um, and there will be contact information for each department there. Some departments encourage you to reach out to a supervisor directly, and we do have a find a supervisor directory on the web pages. And some departments prefer you to contact their general office team um, first or even apply for a PhD first. So do do some research. <laughs> you'll be coming to Sheffield to do a PhD, um, so you'll be used to doing research. So do do lots of research before you choose your PhD and work out um, which is the preferred route to apply. 
And this is just some screenshots of the uh, PhD project directory, how to find a supervisor and how to find a department or discipline. All of these are available on our website. And entry requirements for Indonesia. Um, for entry onto a master's, typically a GPA of three um, out of four from your S1 bachelor degree or D4 diploma with a minimum IELTS of 6.5 or above with at least six in each component um, or equivalent. You can see all the English tests that we accept on our web pages. And for entry to a PhD, typically a GPA of three out of four from your S2 master's degree with a minimum IELTS of 6.5 or above with at least six in each component or equivalent. Um, you will also need supporting documents. So you'll need a transcript uh, and degree certificate plus translations, a personal statement, two academic references, uh, English certificate, and most of them are valid for two years. And if you're applying for a PhD, you will need your proposal. Okay, so as you can imagine, we are still uh, being impacted by COVID-19. Our top priority continues to be the health and safety of our staff and students. And we are working hard to ensure you have the most up-to-date advice, guidance and support. We have dedicated web pages for students to refer to for latest updates and where you can learn about the key safety measures we have in place. Currently, the UK is still in a national lockdown Although we did have some very positive news this morning from the government about a roadmap um, out of this current lockdown, um, which is all looking very promising. Um, but as we are currently in the lockdown, this means that all of our teaching and learning is being done remotely and virtually. Our lectures, tutors and um, supervisors are well adjusted to teaching this way now. Um, we had actually been recording many of our lectures pre-COVID for the benefit of our students anyway, so they could re-watch lectures as many times as they wanted to. As the picture improves in the UK and the vaccination programme continues to be rolled out nationally, we hope we will be able to move back to a blended learning um, option this summer and autumn. This would mean large lectures would probably still be online but smaller tutorials and seminars could be held face to face in a socially distanced way. As you can imagine, it continues to be a fast paced and ever changing landscape. And we have to continually monitor the advice from the government to ensure our students remain safe. We have a dedicated testing center on campus for people who are not showing signs to help keep asymptomatic infections down. These tests are free to staff and students and are encouraged to be done on a regular basis. We have set up a university hardship fund for students who have been financially impacted by COVID. For example, if they lost their part-time job while studying last year or need to pay more for a faster broadband now because of all the online learning, they can apply for extra funding from the university to cover that cost. To find out more about how we're supporting our students through COVID, please do go to our web pages. Okay. And uh, we also have a virtual open day hub. Next, the next event is actually on Wednesday this week. Um, this will be probably most appropriate for people interested in a master's level study, but students interested in PhDs can still sign up, but we will have virtual PhD evenings um, as well. And the dates for those are to be confirmed soon. We also have a chat platform available for you to talk to current students from a range of departments to find out what is, um, uh, what's it like to be a student at Sheffield. You can access this now from our web pages. Search chat to us on our website for more information. And on our YouTube channel, we have some great yeah. virtual tours on accommodation, um, life in Sheffield in general. So check those out as well. And finally, thank you. Thank you for listening to us today. Thank you for bearing with us during those technical problems. Um, we hope this has given you a flavour of life at Sheffield. 
and we would love to stay in touch with you all. So if you haven't yet, please do fill in the survey link that Dalila shared at the beginning um, and we will uh, get back in touch with you if you have any more questions. And we will now be able to go to a quick Q&A. Um, and so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Jessica Purim. Uh, there, there's a question from one of the participants about how, how, how is life to be a Muslim in the University of Starfield? Uh, maybe Ms. Dawla can help. Yeah, um, I'll take on the Q&A sessions because um, I'm quite familiar with the Indonesian market um, as well as um, 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 I'm a recruitment officer for um, the University of Sheffield as well. Um, so I'll take on the questions now. I'll start reading one by one. Um, if there are questions that I may not be able to answer, I would appreciate it if you can help to follow up um, by sending e email to me so that I can reply to you directly. So um, let's start with the first question, which is how's um, life like as a Muslim student um, at the University of Sheffield? Um, I'm proud to say that the city of Sheffield is actually one of the Muslim friendly city um, in the UK. Uh, in the city itself, there are a number of mosques available for you to um, you know, go to if you want to perform a jama'ah uh, prayer or if you want to perform a Friday prayer. Um, other than that, if I mean, because most usually refer to like, you know, a, a big space for you to perform a, a big jamaah prayer, right? But if it's just you performing like daily prayer, not really the Friday prayer or not really the jamaah prayer, then um, there are also plenty of prayer rooms available. So I'm sure in Indonesia, prayer rooms are known as uh, musola. So yes, we have a number of musola on campus as well. Um, so yeah, um, usually the musala would also uh, come along with um, like a, a ablution uh, or cleaning uh, facility, like wudu facility. So yeah, it's a very uh, Muslim friendly city. It's not just about mosque and also about musallas. Um, it's also quite easy to find halal food in Sheffield. Um, the nice thing about studying in the UK is that because the, I think the, the public there, the government also are just so particular with their, you know, um, food regulations, I would say. So um, when you're there, uh, I mean, depending on your own belief as well, um, uh, of course, the, 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 the most ideal options would be we want to see that um, the food is labeled halal um, for us to, you know, be confident to consume it. But if it's the case, um, you can't find a halal options to certain things that you like to have, um, then uh, you can always also trust uh, the food packaging labeling when they say that first it's probably vegan or suitable for vegetarian, then you know that it would not be contaminated with like, you know, animal products. And um, as, so long that it's also free uh, from alcohol as well. I, I, but again, this depends on your own beliefs because I, I, I trust um, some, you know, Muslim belief could differ, uh, especially from region, from countries, right? Uh, between countries, yeah. So that's about uh, life as a Muslim student there. I hope that um, helped to answer your question. I'll proceed to the next question, which is, are there any summer course program for undergraduate students? Um, I'm afraid to say we don't have any summer course program for undergraduate students because summer would be the time when our undergraduate students would be on um, break as well. So um, if you're looking for study abroad options, then that could be possible, but it won't happen in summer. If you're looking for um, options for study abroad, uh, things that you have to be aware of would be um, that you can choose whether you wanna do that uh, in one semester or in one full year but you must have finished your first year undergraduate program first. And usually you have to look at, you know, um, studying for modules that you could bring back the credits to your home university. So there are many, uh, say like, it involves a lot of like procedures in terms of going to study abroad. But for study abroad, um, you will be expected to pay the fees yourself um, to the University of Sheffield because um, that's considered as like non-partner exchange program. Yeah. Hope that answers your question as well. Uh, so and then I'll proceed to the next one. Is in Sheffield there is there a master in education program? Yes, we do have. In fact, we do have School of Education. Let me just share with you very quickly the link to the School of Education so that you can have a look at um, a list of um, postgraduate master programs that we offer within the School of Education. So this probably applies to a number of um, questions being asked by a number of um, uh, 
participants today. So um, when you're looking at the uh, postgraduate master courses available within the School of Education, it's also important to note that they offer some options um, for distance learning study, distance learning delivery mode, um, but they also do offer some options in full-time delivery mode, which means um, attending the course on campus. So that's for education. Uh, let me try to go back to the questions, see which questions I should be continuing with. Um, okay, right. Um, so the next question I think is asking about um, doing a postgraduate research study in the area of um, communications. So I think that could be possible because we do have a department of journalism studies at the University of Sheffield, just so you know, our department of journalism studies is one of the best in the UK. Um, so um, just like the presentation slides have highlighted earlier, um, it would be good if you can go onto our PhD program page so that you can search um, for a relevant supervisor uh, who will be supervising uh, the research area that you are interested in uh, in, in more detail. Yep. And then um, hope that have answered that question. So I'll move on to the next questions. What kind of scholarships? Um, I believe that have already been answered um, from uh, the slides earlier. So basically just to summarize or to remind, we only have got partial scholarships uh, schemes available for international students to apply for. For 2021 intake, um, the most rewarding scheme would be the uh, postgraduate thought master international merit scholarships. It's worth 25% of the tuition fee discount. Um, it's limited to 150 international students, so that's very competitive. You will have to apply for the master course first, get an offer, and then you'll be invited um, to apply for that scholarship if you're eligible for it. Um, and you will have to write an essay to apply for that scholarship. So basically, in terms of the selection criteria, they will select based on the CGPA that you have obtained in your previous study, um, as well as on the essay that you will write uh, as part of applying for that uh, master scholarship, uh, yeah, merit scholarship schemes. Um, apart from that, if you don't win the merit scholarship, which worth 25% of the tuition fee discount, alternatively, you will be considered uh, almost automatically for uh, another scholarship, but it's only it only worth £2,000 if you study in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities and Social Science, um, and, and it worth £2,500 tuition fee discount for if you study in the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Um, yeah, but uh, like the presentation has highlighted, you can only obtain one of the scholarships. So just to summarize, it's only partial scholarships that the university is offering. Unless if you're interested in applying for um, international development course, then we do have um, some sort of like a full scholarships, but it's extremely competitive because I think we can only select um, around three or five winners um, on that scholarships. And it's called Ellen Nesta Ferguson um, Scholarships. Again, you have to apply for the course first. Um, if the course is eligible for Ellen and Nesta, usually in the application form, you'll be able to select that you are interested to apply for uh, the, the applicable scholarship. So yeah. And then, um, Okay, so I'll proceed to the next questions. I'm currently on questions asked by Mr. Daniel Aquino Pobaya. So the second question he's, he has asked is about um, whether we can, uh, whether students can do part-time job or full-time job. Okay, that's, that's, that's very, uh, yeah. Uh, it, well, according to the visa that will, you'll be applying for, well, basically as an international student, you will need to apply for a student visa, right, to study in the UK. The student visa, uh, under the student visa, you'll be allowed to undertake part-time job up to 20 hours per week during term time and unlimited during holiday or, or during break. But you will not be able to undertake a full-time job because um, part of the responsibility of studying as international students um, under the student visa would be that you have to study full-time. You are allowed to work part-time, but you can't work full-time in the UK. Um, when you're applying for a job in the UK, usually you will need to register for like a national insurance number. And I think um, it, 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 the employer will also be sort of sort of like, you know, responsible to report um, about your um, 
I don't know, you, uh, what do you call that? Like, uh, what, what, how many hours you've been on the job? So, I mean, if you're doing full time job, uh, that's almost um, impossible because it will be reported to the, uh, you know, government UKBI, um, and could result in your, um, you know, having having a, a bad implications on your visa. Yeah. So I uh, hope that's clear for now. I'll move on to the next question, which is what can what language proficiency do you need to apply in Sheffield? Well, as a standard qualification, we do accept IELTS. Uh, it's usually mentioned on the online prospectus as well in terms of the specific grades that we can accept. Uh, so I really recommend you to check on the online uh, individual prospectus for more information on that. Um, we do accept alternative uh, inter English language qualifications. Let me just share the link with you so that you can identify what alternative English language qualifications we accept. Uh, okay, I've just shared with you the link where you can explore more about the uh, acceptable English language qualification. If it doesn't appear that clear to you, you can always uh, revert back to us to uh, if you if you wish for us to uh, explain more about what alternative English language qualification we can accept. I hope uh, I have answered uh, Mr. Daniel Aquino Puba's questions for now. So I'll move on to the next question. Um, for Ayuni, uh, since you are interested in Master of Early Childhood Education, right? I just wanted to highlight to you that we have actually two form of uh, master programs that are related to early childhood education. The first one would be the full-time program, which is Master of Education in early childhood and the other one is master of early childhood education uh, i've shared with you the link for uh for the courses available within the school of education right so you have a look further on that link you'll be able to identify which one is which because one of the courses will be full-time study whereas the other one would be a distance learning study yeah and again um, because you have asked about like you know um, course specific details i re really strongly recommend you to join the postgraduate online open day this wednesday which will happen uh on, on 24th february because then you can listen or, or get to know directly from the department about the structure of the course so that you can also ask them whether there will be opportunity to attend and, uh, or teach uh, at local schools there i'll move on to the next questions asked by miss alfira uh, okay, so how much IELTS grades? Again, uh, I recommend you to check on the online prospectus because different course requires different IELTS requirement. The lowest uh, would be around 6.5 overall, minimum six in each component, but some courses would require seven overall and some would also ask for 7.5, whichever course you're interested in, you have to uh, confirm further on the online prospectus. So proceed next would be Questions by Mr. Satria. I hope that's right. It's a Mr. I'm not too sure. Um, right. Bachelor of Chemistry Education, if you want to apply to a master, sorry, master program in education. Um, our master in education, we don't really have a master in education that's so specific to like subject uh, teaching, you know, it's more on you know, studying like the, the, the curriculum design, the pedagogy, the, the psychology in the classroom, you know, it's more on like, um, you know, how, how do I say it's like, like the environment in the classrooms more rather compared to, uh, rather than the, the subject specific or the technical details. So um, again, uh, basically, I believe you would be eligible to apply for all sorts of like master program we have within the School of Education, but it's uh, always important for you to refer back to the online prospectus and identify specific entry requirements. So move on to Ms. Mariana's questions. I'm majoring in animal husbandry. Are there any opportunities to continue studying? And whether there is a working relationship with a livestock company? Mm -hmm. um, we only have got animal and plant sciences department, um, but they, the course they are dealing with, um, one course that I could think of would be, sorry, just a moment. We don't, I would say that we don't really uh, offer courses that's so into, you know, dealing with like, you know, uh, 
livestock. Instead, they they deal in the area of um, like molecular biology and biotechnology, but related to the animal and plant sciences. So I'm not too sure whether that's what you're looking for. Um, I'll just share with you the link to the department very quickly so that you can identify further whether uh, whether there are such courses that are related to your interests. So let me just share the link very quickly. Do we still have times or? Um... Yeah, if, uh, we can add more ten minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. 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 Thank uh, I'll skip Mr. Asano Takwim's question as well because I believe I have answered that uh, for a couple of times already. I'll move on to Ms. Alpha's questions regarding online LLM. No, we don't offer any online LLM program. What we have is a one-year full-time LLM program at the University of Sheffield. So we do have a school of law, which is ranked um, top 100 in the world um, under the Times Higher Education um, ranking. Uh, and they do offer two sort of like LM for international students to apply for. Just get that link for you. But it must be uh, studied um, full time um, in Sheffield. Yeah. So, and I'll move on to uh, questions now. Miss Yani, Miss Yani's questions. Okay. Are the PhD studies okay? Um, and whether there are possibility to obtain PhD scholarships from the university? Uh, I think the presentation just now has highlighted um, what are poss possibilities of obtaining a PhD scholarships from the university. Usually every year, um, the university would open um, PhD uh, scholarship application for international students, but it's very competitive and the opening time is usually very, very short. Um, usually it would open somewhere around October or November uh, and, and closes around January the next year. And you must usually, if you're applying for that scholarships, you must start your studies um, in in the year of the scholarship closing uh, application closing time. So if let's say, for example, if the scholarship opens this year in October uh, and then closes next year, January, right? Usually the requirement is for you to start your PhD study in October next year. So because it's competitive, they will assess your applications from the proposal that you have submitted, from the uh, supervisor's feedback on the interview they have um, conducted with you. And they also um, will assess your um, prof uh, education background as a whole. So um, depending on the quality of your application, there is possibility of you to obtain full fund full funding um, for, for, from the, the, the scholarship schemes, but it could also uh, there's also possibility for you to just obtain partial funding, but it depends on the quality of the applications. And okay, for whom MRE's ES program is designed, especially who are eligible to apply to the program? We have very limited programs uh, with that, that offers the degree qualification of MRES. Um, it's usually in the Department of Animal and Plant Science. Um, and um, it's targeted to those who prefer to have, you know, a, a heavier coverage on the research project as compared to the uh, MS Thought Master MSc. So let me just share with you very quickly an example of um, MRES program that we have uh, within the Department of Animal and Plant Sciences. Mm. Okay. Um, how Miss Delila? Is uh, it's the time is up, so okay, you said okay. Uh, yeah, you can totally tell, right. uh, you can tell them where to where to contact if they have more questions about the University of Sheffield. Sure. Yeah. So um, for anyone who doesn't really get their questions answered, you can always fill up the first link that I have shared in the chat box, or you can also let I think uh, Miss Eva. Uh, 
uh, know later if you have her contacts and she can always pass the questions to me. Yes, please. I have uh, put my uh, information in the chat box, but you can also contact uh, to the International Office of ONS to have my contact detail. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, before we end this webinar here, yeah, I would like to ask all of the participants to turn on the camera so we can have a photo session together. Okay. okay so, what teman bisa nyalakan kameranya kita foto sesi dulu. Oke, okay. uh, karena ini ada banyak, jadi dari yang awal dulu ya. Uh, udah, saya hitung. Uh, I will count from one to three. So please be ready. Uh, one, two, three. Oke, okay, for the next slide. Please be ready. One, two, three. Okay. okay, actually we have some slides, but only the first two slides that open the camera, so that's all. Uh, I would like to say thank you uh, to Miss Eva, Miss Dalila, and Miss Jessica Brim for today's initiation. I hope that it will be that beneficial to uh, the participant. Uh, for the participant, uh, if you have a further question to uh, the, about the study in Seville, you can contact me or just simply put your question in the WhatsApp group that uh, I, I made uh, and I will forward the question to Miss Eva and Miss Eva will forward the question to Miss Dalila and Miss Jessica. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jessica, Miss Dalila, and also uh, Miss Dean. And thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar, study in the University of Sheffield. Uh, buat teman-teman yang sudah hadir di sini, kami dari International Office sedang membuka open recruitment untuk UNX Global Ambassador 2021. Bagi yang tertarik bisa langsung cek Instagram International Office. On behalf of the UNS International Office and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. See you. Gracias.